This is an example problem where liquid methanol is fed to a space heater at a rate of, in this case, uh, 12 uh, liters per hour and burned with excess air. The product gas is analyzed and the following dry basis mole percentages are determined. Okay, so these are dry basis uh, mole percentages. So first of all, we want to draw and label a flow chart and verify the system has zero degrees of freedom, meaning that we can solve the problem. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, I uh, create created this figure. Okay, so we have our methanol coming in, 12 liters per hour. We have air, and we know that air is typically 21% oxygen, 79% nitrogen on a molar basis. And then uh, we're going to have some moles coming out. Now, this one is our dry basis. Okay, so we have number of moles on the dry basis, and then also number of moles uh, from water. So on a dry basis, often when you send this to a gas chromatograph, it takes out the water first. Uh, mole fractions are often reported on a dry basis or uh, without um, water. Okay, um, and then um, let's do our, our degree of freedom analysis. Okay, so this is uh, our degree of freedom analysis. We have uh, the number of moles of air, the number of moles on a dry basis, uh, the number of moles of water coming out, and then um, the number or the mole fraction of oxygen as well. Okay, so those are our, our four degrees of freedom uh, that we have. Now we can do elemental balances on uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So that gives us uh, some equations. So that's going to be minus three degrees of freedom. And then we have a non-reacting species as well. N2, and that's also going to take away a degree of freedom. So we're left with zero degrees of freedom, or this problem can be solved. Okay, so let's go back up. Um, we want to calculate the fractional conversion of methanol, the percent excess of air fed, and the mole fraction of water in the product gas. So let's just first of all find the molar flow rate of the methanol coming in. Okay, so we're going to start with um, 12 liters per hour. <clears throat> okay, so what we need to do first of all is convert this uh, volumetric flow rate into a uh, into a molar flow rate. Okay, so let's go ahead and compute first of all the mass uh, the the mass flow rate of this. Um, so uh, methanol has a specific gravity of 0.792, or that means that you have 0.792 grams per centimeter cubed. Okay, so liters and centimeter cubed, let's go ahead and get the uh, conversion between those two. That's a thousand centimeters cubed uh, per liter. Okay, so those two are going uh, to cancel. Okay, now we have grams per hour. Okay, so what we want to do is, is go ahead and um, divide by the molecular weight. So we have one gram mole um, it per uh, per 32 grams. Okay, so 32 grams per gram mole um, of uh, of for the molecular weight of methanol. Okay, so that's going to give us the um, molar flow rate. So 297 um, moles or gram moles uh, per hour of this methanol. Okay, so that's that's what we're gonna we're gonna start with. Um, so stoichiometric, um, you know, for, for oxygen to have a stoichiometric amount uh, for a reaction. Uh, let's go back up here and just do the, uh, the reaction. We know we have 1.5 uh, moles of oxygen for every mole of, of methanol. And so if we just multiply this by 1.5, then uh, you know, for stoichiometric um, O2, that's going to be 1.5 times this uh, 297 moles per hour. Okay, and that's going um, to equal 445.5 moles per hour. So just if we had the stoichiometric amount and it was complete combustion, there'd be no oxygen left. But we're going to have some methanol left over. Um, we saw that here. Okay, so it's not going to go to complete combustion. Um, and uh, what we want to do is, is go ahead and calculate our other unknown quantities. So what we can do now is, is go ahead and use another uh, one of our balances um, and uh, our elemental balances. And what we'll do is first of all start with the carbon balance. And so we know that what we have coming in is 297 
uh, moles of methanol okay, per hour. And uh, we know that there is one carbon per um, one, one mole of carbon per mole of um, methanol. Okay, so that gives us the carbon um, in. Okay, and then we're going to set that equal to the uh, carbon out. And uh, what we're going to do is take our uh, dry basis, um, the moles, the molar flow rate uh, coming out of the dry basis times the mole fraction of methanol. Okay, so 0, 0, 0,045. Okay, and then we also know we have one carbon per one uh, methanol. Okay, mole. Okay, and that's going to give us the amount of carbon coming out um, from uh, the methanol. Okay, and then we also have, we're going to add in the other things that are coming out in the, um, the gas stream. Okay, 0 0.0903, that's for the uh, carbon monoxide. And then again, we have one carbon per one CO. Okay, and then we're also going to add in uh, the contribution, the final one, is, um, let's see, that was, that was CO2, so uh, we also have CO as well. Okay, so we had 0 .90, uh, 0.9903, and that was for CO2, and then we're also going to have 0 0.0181, um, again, that's going to be one carbon for one CO. Okay, so um, there's one variable in this equation, and uh, and so we can just solve for the number of uh, the molar flow rate on a dry basis. Um, and that, if we just rearrange it and do the math, that gives us uh, 2,631 uh, 2, moles per hour. Okay, so that's the, you know, without the water, um, that is the, um, if we just split these two, you know, this is maybe going to the gas chromatograph, for example, and this is uh, being condensed. Um, so this is our molar flow rate on a dry basis. Okay, so there's our first quantity. Um, now what we want to do is uh, find our others as well. Um, so let's start with a, a maybe a hydrogen balance. If we started with an oxygen balance, one of the things to note is that oxygen is in uh, about everything here, okay? So we, we uh, often don't start with an oxygen balance. Uh, hydrogen can be easier. In this case, uh, hydrogen is leaving here and there. We know how much is leaving there, so there might be just one unknown in that one, okay, in the, uh, in the water. Okay, so let's just start with the hydrogen balance. Okay, and, uh, and then we might move on to an oxygen balance next. Okay, so the, the amount that's coming in uh, from the hydrogen balance um, is 297, uh, and this is going to be the methanol, okay, times uh, 4 moles of hydrogen for a mole of uh, methanol, and uh, then outlet, we have, um, you know, the amount of, of uh, water times two moles of hydrogen per mole of water. Okay, and then uh, we also have the methanol as well. Okay, so this is going to be Y, uh, okay, OH, um, and, and that's going to be 0, 0.0. Uh, 0, 0.045, okay, times um, the number of dry moles, okay, and that was going to be uh, 2,631 uh, moles per hour, okay, and then as a final one, you had four moles of hydrogen for one mole of that methanol. Okay, so um, this allows us to solve, uh, we only have one variable here, and we can go ahead and solve for that as well. Okay, and that's going to be 570 uh, moles per hour. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just zoom out just a little bit, see where we are. We did a uh, carbon balance, okay, we computed the moles of, of methanol, um, in 
Okay, and then we also computed the uh, stoichiometric uh, water as well. Okay, so uh, we're, we're almost done. We need to do an oxygen balance now. Um, let me go ahead and just do set that one up. Okay, so elemental oxygen balance. We know we have 21%. Uh, um, this is going to be 21% uh, mole fraction of oxygen in the air um, times the number the molar flow rate of air times two moles of oxygen for one mole of, uh, of O2. Okay, and then uh, we also have another inlet source as well. That's going to be in the methanol. Okay, and there is uh, just one uh, mole of oxygen for one mole of uh, methanol. Okay, so these are the inlet terms. Okay, and we're going to set those equal to the outlet terms. Okay, so we have um, okay our our dry bases. Okay, times um, let's just add up all of the different contributions here. Um, I'm just going to do this a little bit fast here, just to to whip through this. Um, okay, so I'm just adding up all of the oxygen contributions. Okay, so in the end, um, what we have is is two unknowns. Okay, so we have an unknown here, um, and then we also have an unknown um, here as well. So let's do a nitrogen balance as well, okay? And let's see if that gives us another, um, this is going to be an N2 balance because it doesn't react, okay? And that's the number of moles of air, okay? And then coming out is, um, okay, times uh, 2631 moles per hour, okay? So this was, um, this is just the summation of the moles equals one. So that's what, that's what it's going to be for um, for the nitrogen. Okay. So now we have two equations and two unknowns. We can solve for n air for both of them and just set those equal to each other. And what that gives us is then the number of O2 in is going to equal uh, 574.9 moles per hour. And uh, you know y O2 uh, coming out is going to be um, 0 0.065. Okay, and then the number of moles uh, or the mole fraction of N2 coming out uh, is going to be 0 0.822. Okay, and then that gives us a number of moles of air as well is 574.9 moles per hour. Okay, so so what is that? Uh, so what does that mean in terms of percent excess? Okay, so that was the amount of air that I had um, that I actually calculated. And if I if I go back, remember we had um, you know the stoichiometric amount right here. Okay, um, so let's let's just go ahead and get our percent excess O2. Okay, so um, in this case, uh, I'm just going to do that as percent. Um, excess equals this 574.9 minus the 445.5 divided by 445.5. Okay, so that was the amount that was required was 445.5, and so this is going to be 0 0.29 or 29% uh, excess. Okay, so that's the excess error that we had. And then let's compute the fractional conversion now of methanol. Okay, um, and so that we had 297 coming in and then uh, just take our mole fraction times the dry basis mole flow rate. Okay, and then divided by what came in and that gives us a 0 0.96 or 96 percent conversion. Okay, so um, you know, this little space heater, one of the things to, to watch out for. Um, obviously, you're going to have some uh, things like methanol or uh, carbon monoxide um, coming into the room. And so that's why you may not uh, want to use a space heater. 
um, in confined spaces with without uh, ventilation. Okay, so um, that concludes uh, this tutorial. Um, just keep in mind uh, the wet and dry basis, um, and we showed elemental balances. Um, we showed um, degree of freedom analysis, and then uh, yeah, and then we were also able to use the M2 species balance as well to solve this problem.